Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash thisweekend for a free $200 credit. Today's episode of This Weekend Startups is brought to you by Turnstone. More than furniture, we're an experience. Go to myturnstone.com forward slash twist to learn more and receive 10% of your first order. And by MailChimp, manage lists with up to 2,000 subscribers and send up to 12,000 emails per month for free with MailChimp. Hey everybody, Noe Shanak is with us, the CEO and founder of Stitcher Radio, over 5 million downloads and counting. It's a really compelling company doing talk radio, radio apps, all that kind of good stuff. The stuff you're listening to right now, it's going to be a great episode where we talk about the future of media, radio, and apps. Stick with us. It's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hey everybody, Noah Shanock is with me today. He is the CEO and founder or co-founder? Co-founder. Co-founder. I always got to be careful about the co-founder founder then you can get people's uh, feathers ruffled. Co-founder of Stitcher Radio, which I know a lot of the people who are fans of This Week in Startups use and actually we're in the top, I don't know, what, two, three, four, five hundred uh, talk shows on your own app. You are. Uh, tell me about the app. How long have you been doing this? How many downloads now? It's, I know last I heard was four or five. We, um, yes, we launched on the iPhone in 2008. We're up to 8 million uh, downloads on wow. iPhone and Android. Yeah, it's coming Holy along cow. really well. Is Android outpacing uh, iPhone now? Which do you get more daily downloads from? iPhone is still outpacing uh, Android, but Android is catching up. What is it? What's the, what's the, what's the race? Is it 60, 100, 60, 2 to 1, 1 to 2? What do we got? Probably 65, 35. At okay, so it's catching up. It'll, yeah. When do you think it will break even surpass this year or the next six months? Tough to know. I mean, a lot of it also is like how often we're featured and yeah. you know, there are big spikes then, but it's, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's coming along. So uh, obviously I'm a fan of the app. I use it. Uh, I think it's a great app. Why don't you have it in the program? Um, so how, how has the company been funded to date and what's the business model? I mean, anybody who's used the app understands or used the podcasting app, which we should get into a little bit, that Apple just released, or any of the other radio programs, understands the value proposition, I think, pretty easy. You open it up, and you have a directory of shows. Yep. And the, uh, and the price is right, because it's free. It's free. Listener. Yeah. Um, and so what's the business model here? So it's an advertising-based model, similar to the radio or, yeah. um, or Pandora. And right. um, you obviously have the ability to do a lot more um, with, with the Internet in terms of um, you know, frequency capping, targeting, all sorts of fun stuff. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning into this week in startups. And boy, am I excited about our next partner. Turnstone is awesome, awesome, simple and smart furniture solutions for small businesses and startups like my own. We're putting in a whole uh, Turnstone installation and it's gorgeous. Look at clout. You guys uh, know Joe from cloud. He was on the program. That's probably Joe right there, I bet. I'm guessing that's his desk right there. But they have a gorgeous office, and they're using the Turnstone project, uh, the Turnstone um, furniture for that reason. Look at how gorgeous it is here. Uh, Screenshot number two, beautiful desks. Um, And really, you know, the environment that you create inside of your office is critical because how it looks, actually, it can be part of how people feel. And people love coming to a beautiful big open building with big tall ceilings and gorgeous desk. All those things add up. The right coffee machine, the right vibe. You know, it, it's all part of creating a culture. And I really do believe that environment is critical. That's why I like to sit in a big open floor plan and talk to all my people constantly and have ideas free flowing. And to do that, you need to have a great partner. And my Turnstone, you can follow on Twitter at my Turnstone, uh, does this. And they're offering 10% off your order. And that's a big deal because if you're ordering these desks, You know, they're not expensive, but they're not cheap. They're sort of like value price, which I really like about them. I don't feel like I'm getting those really cheap ones that you put together and they break apart. And then, like, people sit at them and they're wobbly. And they're not, like, outrageously expensive that you're, like, 
going to break the bank and your VCs and your angel investors are going to be like, WTF, you're spending all this money. It's like the exact price range that startups should be spending. Um, and I think that you're going to like it. So go to myturnstone.com slash twist, T-W-I-S-T, and save 10% on your first order. That's actually a great deal. Take a look here. Um, again, that URL, myturnstone.com slash T-W-I-S-T. And just go check out the product. It's great. And they did Rocket Space, which is where I first saw it. Clout, all kinds of great places. 10% on anything. Code twist. A $50 off any purchase of $250. Code startup. Get there uh, and start designing a great space for your team. Um, you know, listen, culture culture is everything. And your physical space will speak volumes about your business and your culture. Go check out myturnstone.com slash TWIST and get 10% off your first order. This is gorgeous, gorgeous furniture. I've spent days sitting at these desks up at Rocket Space. I've seen people working at them. I'm telling you, your employees and your team are going to love them. Thank you so much to our friends at Turnstone for sponsoring this week in startups. And so what is the... Um what what are the is the app focused just on talk radio or do, can you get other radio can you get live radio because I've only used it for subscribing to podcasts. Yeah, we're so we are focused completely on um, spoken word, so right. everything other than music. Uh, mm. We do have some live streams, and sometimes right. there's music in them. There's right. also um, podcasts or or uh, you know on demand radio. Um, about music or right. with music in it, right. um, but primarily our focus is spoken word. And why is that? Why did you make that decision? There are a lot of folks focused on um, music, and it's really cool and has come um, along um, quite quite a ways. I've always been um, fan. I'd, I'd been a fan of kind of the first um, version of of you know sort of podcasting 1.0. I saw what you could do with this two way internet connection. Yeah. Um, what was the first podcast you listened to? Remember? I, gosh, I can't even remember. I don't even remember. Maybe yeah. Adam Curry or something. Yeah, you know, yeah, some, sure. Like way way back in the day. Dave Weiner, Adam Curry was some, sort of the Podfather. The Podfather, the yeah. yeah. And I, but I just thought it was amazing. There was all this great content already yeah. out there, but, um, but it was really hard to listen to because you have to download and sync, and and discovery is 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 difficult, and it needs to be a really automated experience because you're, you're listening primarily while while you're on the go doing other things um, and so we focused on it one because it's 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 a huge um, opportunity in, into itself like in terrestrial radio 35 percent of listening is to stuff other than music so hmm. uh, we wanted to, to be the best at um, at at this this area we figured we'd leave music to other folks and by focusing on this we've become the leader in it and it's uh, it's coming along well so uh, you think banner ads and targeting that way. Um, let's talk about the hard issues around who owns the content and who gets to advertise around it. Obviously, you know, with Pandora, they're paying a specific license fee uh, for that music. They've negotiated with the four or five major players, and I'm guessing some smaller ones. But you never came to me and said, hey, can I advertise on top of this week in startups? How is the relationship different there, and how do you um, manage it, right? Not that I'm upset about it. I'm glad to get the users at this point. But um, obviously, some people might be. And some people might say, hey, you're, you've got ads on top. When my show's playing, there's ads, right? So how do you manage that? So we, from, from the beginning, we've wanted to work hand-in-hand hand with, with content producers. The nice thing about us relative to the, the music side is there isn't, um, there isn't this sort of middleman of labels. Right. Um, and so we want to build relationships directly with, with content providers. Some, some large media companies we, you know, we, ha we have formal agreements with. There's a long tail also, right. and so um, we have um, we've taken an approach where we have a, a, a content portal that content producer um, logs into. They sign a terms of service, um, and um, you know through that we're able to negotiate anything that needs to be negotiated. You own the rights to the content as of a content course. producer, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, and don't uh, remember giving them to you. And, and in <laughs> most, actually, I think you did because I the, did because or. Somebody by on your loading team the did. app, I get to give you my content. By um, yeah. I, th I think uh, what, well, somebody in signed into the somebody from uh, uh, representative of yours signed in. Signed, I think signed the terms of service. Oh, okay. So um, you're officially we're part officially of the partners. Good. Um, and what are um, the terms of service? What is it? I can. What, what are we? What are you actually saying? That I give you the right to stream it? We, 
yes, we have the right to, to stream it. You can remove it at any time for any reason. You right. own the content. It's very content producer friendly. It as needs we want to be, it to doesn't be. it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Are people does. particular about this? Have you gotten people who are like, what's going on here? So, some folks um, are most, uh, especially relative to what we understand on the music side, it's much more hand in hand. I mean, yeah. it's much more, um, a, as we've grown and we're um, the, the second biggest uh, in terms of on demand besides uh, iTunes, there's right. definitely, as, as we grow, there, there, yeah. there's, there's, um, there, you know, there's been some friction, but we've been able to work through it. We've, um, you know, I can count on, I think, one hand the cases were content producers have been like no take our content off and never put it on there again wow maybe it's two hands but it's not three um and and what's their argument what do you think their position is because i mean they're getting the listeners and can they turn the ads off or do the ads have to be on currently so so the the ads have to be on except in um in the case of uh, public radio, for Got instance, it. we have a we have a you know we have a different deal with public radio. So, and the ads are the little banner ads at the bottom served by a network. Right now, and eventually we will, um, right. w- you know, the, it will be an audio display combination, but right. we will do that. So, like a conjunction. pre-roll or something, or do you you interrupt my program? It would be uh, always a pre-roll, yeah. n- never interrupt or. Um, and will I get to opt out of that if I want to? Because that would be a that would be. A hard no for me if I couldn't turn off the pre-roll. You you would, um, would I and you would also be able to. <laughs> you would also potentially be able to opt in to do more of a, a live read, and then we would work together yeah. to because there's a lot of interactive stuff we could do um, sure. on Stitcher that yeah. would be cool if you were. Ah, plugging so while something. it's playing. We could be having people take a quiz or submit their email. So who do you think is going to be MVP of, of you know the World yeah. Series? Vote now. It's sponsored by one of your sponsors, and then you know, right. um, and we work it out together. So yeah, I think that that's the key because f- the content owners want to feel like they have control and that they're respected. And so opt in. Obviously, we're not opting into the service, right? right? In order for you to aggregate it, you have to just do it without our permission. Um, you know, aggregate it all together, but it's all freely available on the web, so it doesn't feel that like it's too much of an infringement. But obviously, if these six or seven people did. What was their argument? It, well, in, in without naming specific names, Adam, yeah. So Adam Carolla, the, the um, is Adam Carolla on or not? Adam, Adam Carolla is on. Okay, so um, it wasn't, he wasn't one of the seven. There, <laughs> there are. Um, so, so I guess two two things. One, answer your question about yeah. why. Um, you know why they might not want to be on Stitcher or yeah. other in other places. A lot of them will come out with their own app, um, and yeah, maybe we're it's doing a paid that. app. Yeah. Um, and y- usually, what we see is um, they they'll talk about like, hey, maybe we don't want to be in all these places because we're going to p- pay for this app. Then they realize that the mm. app business is pretty tough, and that people actually want to yeah. listen to a bunch of different content. And so the apps are good because they have more than just audio yeah. um, for, for a particular content pr- producer. And we, um, we encourage apps, um, every content producer to have an app, but um, they should also be kind of everywhere else. So that's the, that's the biggest argument. Uh, so they have a dedicated app that people are paying for and they're like, hey, you put it for free, then they can't get it. And... Yeah. Why don't they just put the archive for f- uh, paid? Well, in some cases, like, uh, well, just so less. this American Life, for instance, will uh, have um, you. You can only get one episode, I think, both on on, on iTunes and Stitcher, and yeah. then for the entire archive, you right. would go so to. They the have the best of both worlds. There. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm planning on taking the archive of the show, maybe things that are older than ten or twenty or thirty episodes, and putting them in a paid app. But I still want to get the Stitcher people for the last thirty days. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think Apple. I don't, I don't have any inside information, but I don't not have any inside information. Is that? So what is your non-inside information? They'll have, and I don't have the same non-information about YouTube, but it's pretty clear that those guys would do well to have a subscribe button and a paid subscription service. Are you thinking of having a paid subscription service into the app built in? So we, we right now have a way for content producers that have um, a paid show. Like, mm-hmm. for instance, um, we have deals with uh, Fox and Premier and some of the conservative 
um, some of the conservative hosts yeah. have, like, if you're a Rush Limbaugh fan club yeah. m- member, um, as get, part of that, you get this, you get Rush Limbaugh on demand. Mm. Um, and as part of that, you get this, you know, your, with your credentials, you can log in on Stitcher and listen to the content ah, there on Stitcher. Nice. So we don't, um, so you can't buy it on Stitcher, but we'll send you to, to the right place to, to buy it. And, um, and then you can listen it to it. It seems to me like that's a huge opportunity. I mean, if somebody's listening, there needs to be a subscribe to a podcast service or a standard where anybody could subscribe to any podcast and then consume it any way they want just by logging in through credentials. So why doesn't that exist yet? We don't know. That's on your roadmap. It's got to be, right? I mean, it's so obvious, low-hanging fruit. There are elements of it that yeah. um, that What, are. like donate maybe or buy pay-per-view episodes? What? Donate. The, the other thing is with Apple, it's... Um, it's it's a bit tricky, um, mm. and they're you, you know they want to um, extract thirty percent, and yeah. content producers in many cases don't want that to to happen. And I so, wouldn't care about thirty percent. Seems reasonable. So I'd case, rather it, it be, be ten. I mean, well, for one click, I mean, it you know, I mean, that's not. Yeah, but I mean, for the size of their audience, I mean, we pay it for apps. It does seem heavy, but then again, when you think about the resale of CDs or books. You sell those, and they mark it up 100% in the store. So 30% seems kind of low when you compare it. So, but that's one of the, I mean, that's one of the issues we, yeah. we come up against. And then also wor- working to understand, you know, where Apple's coming out in terms of that. So. so Apple launched their own podcasting app. They did. When you saw that that day as an entrepreneur who's been working on this problem for how many years? Five. So in year five, you see... Finally, Apple separates it. The product was kind of kludgy, but getting better. Does that just send shivers down your spine, or does it validate what you're doing? And you see it's number one, two, or three in the free app list every day. Yeah. So Apple's been, frankly, a great partner of ours. They, um, they have their editorial team has featured our app yeah. quite, quite a lot. Um, they... Uh, so, and, and this is a space that's in its infancy. And yeah. so, um, from our perspective to, to have a company like Apple, um, come out with their, their own app, it validates, it hopefully gets more people listening to, yeah. um, to, to on demand shows. And, and, um, and so that's great. We like that. That's a very diplomatic answer, but I have to call BS on it. This is a direct competitor. And they've been nice to you by featuring it, but now they've come in and they will be the default on everybody's phone. They don't need to download Stitcher. What is the added functionality that you're going to have that's going to let you compete against them? Well, we do a, a number of things that um, they don't do now. Maybe, maybe they'll do in the future, but right. they, they what don't are do those? it now. Um, I mean, the design is obviously, I think your design's better, I'll be honest. I like you. your interface and UX better. And that yeah. is, I believe, a distinct advantage you have. So um, w- one thing that we do, which we'll get back to that, the other question about what happened with the content producers that yeah. weren't um, ha- happy with us. Um, yeah. One thing that we do is we compress most of the content where we have re- you know, formal relationships with, with folks down to a bit rate that streams reliably over mobile networks and also... That's a big deal. We need that. You have it. So we just have to go in there. We check a button. You take my file... And you make two or three copies of it, one at 14 kilobits, one at 28, one at... We actually just do it at, 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 at 32, and that's oh. it. Okay. Um, and uh, and we, we worked hard to get the sound quality good at 32 and be able to compress quickly, because mm-hmm. we need to do that. Um, sure. For, and th- so that's, that makes a huge difference, both in, in low mm. um, co- coverage areas and then also um, as they're are becoming sort of more and more bandwidth cap. So that's, yeah. that, that's one thing we have. Um, we have a pretty robust social integration, um, yeah. which, and, and none of these are things that Apple couldn't p- potentially no, do, yeah. but they're also they're They have a great business building hardware and they're pretty good. at Right. It. I mean, if you look at a lot of, I mean, I, we could be having the same discussion about Apple paying, you know, inside of the social network, inside of iTunes. Right. Right. So there's no guarantee that they'll even continue supporting or evolving this product. But I don't get the sense that I think get the sense that the iTunes podcast app or the app is here to stay. So, um, what, what do you think? How, how do your how does your board and your how do your investors as an entrepreneur? You know, the audience is mainly entrepreneurs or would be entrepreneurs soon to be entrepreneurs. Um, 
How do you manage a conversation like that? When it comes out, do you proactively email everybody and say, listen, the podcast thing comes out, here's why we're not worried, here's the future roadmap, or do they start calling you in a total panic? What happened when the app came out? Hey, everybody. It's the MailChimp commercial. You've been waiting for it. I probably just blew out the speakers in your Tesla. Sorry about that. If you're wearing the new Apple earbuds, it's probably hurt a lot. Uh, but listen, I've been using MailChimp for a very long time. I don't even need to read the copy of the commercial because I know it by heart. It's an amazing service. I use it daily for the launch ticker. I use it for my Jason Nation newsletter. We use it for This Week in Startups. I love MailChimp. I've been using it for years, and their product is gorgeous, and it's been designed to just do all these amazing features, whether it's mobile templates uh, or analytics. They just make it work. And let me tell you something. Delivery rates are going down for people who don't use products like MailChimp. They're just plummeting because you know how it is. How many times have you had your mom's email go in the spam filter? The people are getting, uh, who run the spam filters are getting crazy. They're blocking everything because they don't want, they want people to feel like, oh my God, my Gmail, my Yahoo mail, it works perfectly. Well, you know what? MailChimp's got relationships with all those people and they take it seriously. I had somebody who told me that they had a really high um, complaint rate on their mailing list and that MailChimp had turned them off. And I said, thank you, MailChimp, for doing that. MailChimp will turn off the bad actors so that the good actors, you and I, the people building our companies, can get through. And they hold the line. They are not going to let people abuse the system. And if you have uh, less than 2,000 subscribers and you send less than 12,000 emails per month, it's free. My thing is every brand, every product, every person should have an email list because that email list will grow and grow and grow. And even if it's just a couple hundred people or a dozen people, let me tell you, those are your super fans. And I can tell you the super fans of my program, This Week in Startups, are rabid. When I ask them to, for help on something, they do it. And they are happy to do it, and I'm happy to do things with them. And the way I reach them is in their email box because, hey, your social network can change. And the social networks are changing the rules all the time. If you're investing in a Facebook page, you're a dope because look what they did. They charged you to get your likes, and now they're charging you to reach the people who you got to like it and people who are your fans. Not MailChimp. If you've got that email address, you've got it for life. And there's no silliness going on where you're going to get double taxed like Facebook is double taxing people. MailChimp is the gold standard. Everybody needs that MailChimp. If your startup is not collecting emails, every day that goes by, you're losing a dozen, two dozen, a hundred emails. If you just get a dozen emails a day, you realize you'll have like 4,000 emails, 5,000 emails a year from now. If you did that for the three or four years that you've been running your startup, you'd have a 25,000 email list right now. How powerful would that be? How would that help you make your quarter and your sales numbers, huh? Think about it. Email is the most powerful communication tool on the internet today. Not Twitter, not Facebook, it's email. That's why I rely on it, and that's why I rely on the best email provider, MailChimp. The free plan is always free. Drag and drop file uploading, blah, 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 blah. Amazing feature, amazing feature, amazing feature. You get the idea. I use the product. You need to use the product. Thank you, MailChimp. Um, not honestly, too much, yeah. uh, honestly, but yeah. not not. I mean, we've 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 um, you know we've had some moments before, but this wasn't um, this wasn't one of them. One, there had been rumors it was going to come out for sure. for a while. Um, there are also there there are other things that we we've sort of built out functionality wise, like robust recommendations engine. I mean, there there were um, we are the furthest along um, in the space besides. Pandora and getting into the car. I mean, it mm. deals with like Ford and GM and BMW. How do you get a deal with Ford and GM to be on that display? Is that pay for play or how does it work? No, it's it's similar to uh, the the radio, which no, no money exchanges hands. They sell more cars because they have Stitcher and, and oh. um, we get more uh, users. So um, that's... How does the 3G work in those cars or the 4G in those cars? Do they, you have to pay a monthly fee or is it built in? I mean, I just... I have an IP enabled car for the first time in the last two months with my Tesla. In mo in most cases, um, the the phone continues to do the heavy lifting, but through Bluetooth or through connecting it, it basically has a much more in robust integration on the dashboard. So you get into the car, hmm. you still have the phone in your pocket, um, but Stitcher pops up on the dash and basically acts like a radio. And you and oh. and you have all of the you know the kind of the benefits of the two way. So you have to have a phone for it to work. It's not going to just work the stock. Mustang. But there's already I mean there's a hundred million internet connections in cars through people people in in the U S that just have have. And you think that's going to be the model? Is I get in a car, it connects to over Bluetooth, and I use my phone's connection as opposed to having another connection in the car and it, paying another internet bill. 
it's, it's hard to know, and I think it will partially come down to how easy ca- carriers and auto companies make it. So mm. if you're, you know, if you're, you've just bought a car, you're at the end of the whole rigmarole, you're checking boxes and it's just another $5 on your Verizon or, you know, yeah. Sprint account. That's a, that's pretty different than a whole you know, new, new twenty four ninety nine a month kind of. Um, yeah. So, but what we're, is the price we're point prepared either way. What do you think for cars for to like get mass adoption? Less than five dollars a month, five or less. For mass adoption, probably five dollars or less, especially because th- there already is an internet connection I- in the car through the mobile right. device. Right. So it's not yeah. In order to the convenience of not having to connect your Bluetooth. Yeah. And there's also some other benefits to it, right? Like the, 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 the phone is a piece of hardware that um, ha- has an average life of a year and a half um, uh, versus a car, which is seven years. Yeah. Um, there's over-the-air connect- like upgrades happening all the time, iOS 6, whatever it is, um, versus a car, which is much more, more difficult. This has already so. happened for me with the Model S, the Tesla. It has 3G. They yeah. gave it to you for free for the first year. But my understanding is it's going to be able to connect to your phone in the next version or soon. So it ha- came with 3G. It didn't have LTE because LTE wasn't ready or whatever when they were designing the car. Yeah. But when it connects to my phone over, over as like a MiFi, I guess, or as a Wi-Fi, I'm going to have LTE in my dashboard, which is 20 megabit. The whole idea of having to compress goes away then. It does if it's if it's uh, if it's not capped. If you're yeah. not capped, it then it would then it would go away. But yeah, people are concerned about caps. And you're starting to get warnings now, huh? Like, you, do you guys give a warning when you pop up? I got the warning on Rhapsody or on Sirius. I use the Sirius app, and the Sirius app has been giving me warnings. Like, we don't, you know, this could eat your data pretty quick. We, so we'll give a warning um, to a user just when they, you know, just like, list, look, this uses bandwidth. The amount of hours that you would need to listen to Stitcher for it to move the needle at 32, you know, 32 kilobits per second is... It's a lot of hours. I mean, you're, yeah. you'd be listening to Stitcher all the time relative to video or, or music where you need to hear it in, in a higher fidelity. Right. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a really big benefit yeah. for us. How, how many people in the company now? How big is it? Where are you based? 35 oh, second between Mission and Howard. 35 is perfect size. Yeah, 35 is a good size. You know everybody. You met everybody before you hired them. Yeah. But that's going to change. We had 50, 75, 100. What's the future of the business, do you think? Because it does seem like... Your company's uh, now five years, $15 million or so raised. I'm not yeah. sure exactly the numbers, but really what a great group. Benchmark, New Atlantic, um, and New Enterprise is a great VC firm. So you've got plenty of funding. And with only 35 employees, you're only burning half a million a month, and you're probably covering that, or a portion of that with the advertising. What's next? What's the future of the business? Where do you see this going? Are you going to become an original content producer? You see people like YouTube funding content in advance? It seems to me the technical issues are going to be solved. The issue is monetization for, con- for people who make content. That is the big opportunity, is it not? The big opportunity is monetization. Of, I mean, as we, I mean, we've seen this before in, in, in every industry that's gone kind of digital, right? And mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're right in the, um, we're kind of in the second inning of um, the, the radio dial moving to, to digital for right. all of the benefits of the two-way connection yeah. versus the one-way connection. So um, right now we're still in a, um, a, as an industry and also um, as Stitcher, we're in a um, focus on um, pr- product enhancements being everywhere that a, a user wants to listen to us, have the easiest, most robu- robust um, listening experience possible, continue to add great um, c- content um, to, to, to the service. And but we're also starting to hit the era of, of monetization it needs to happen. It seems to me with the YouTube funding content in advance, um, you could be raise another round or by uh, providing subscription-based services or a donate button or even coming with big advertising buys could do what YouTube is doing, which is YouTube's going out to market. Full disclosure, Mahalo is a YouTube partner of this, this funded program that you know about. Um, which is a different company than this weekend. Um, they're going out in advance with a slate of programming, selling an upfront, collecting that money, and then splitting it with partners um, and giving traffic, I guess, to those partners, directing a certain amount of traffic. Yep. feels to me like you're a mini YouTube. If you went to 10 talk show hosts and said, hey, we're going to make a business channel and we're going to sell it out we're going to go in advance to American Express and sell it at a high CPM. We're going to do better than you could do. 
we're going to keep you know 45 percent like youtube does and we're going to advance you some production money against that this could be an amazingly powerful model for you could it not it could be and it's something that we're um we're definitely talking about yeah. and um and and could potentially be dabbling in yeah because a lot of the podcasters stop i just pulled up stitcher and one of the related shows was venture voice yeah venture voice hasn't published since 2009 right and so it seems like people it's easy to start a podcast let me tell you something after doing it for three years it's not easy three years and 300 episodes later you know we're doing 100 episodes a year basically it's hard a lot of people give up yeah a lot of people do but there i mean there was sort of this first coming of podcasts and it was yeah. early and now it's 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 really hitting its stride because it's internet radio and it's i mean connectivity is there so it it uh and the monetization, it takes a little bit of time. Is it, was, was syncing the problem, do you think, now that we've resolved the syncing issue? Like, we're yeah. not syncing anymore, we're streaming. Yeah. Was that the real, the, is, is that the, was that the real Im impediment to mass adoption? That was a big piece of it. The, the other piece of it is, um, is discovery mm. um, and being able, and, and having the experience you get, especially when you're, when you're on the go do, doing other things, which is when you listen to this type of content, yeah. you basically just want to press the entertain me button. Right. And that's what the radio does. Right. And, um, and we can do it better, obviously, because we program, we, we know, yeah, with, we know things about um, what you already like location. to listen to. Location, what you listen to, what other people that like, um, stuff that you like to listen to, listen to, mm -hmm. what your friends are listening to. Um, so we know a lot more and we can, and we can, we can build an experience for you, a unique experience that's, uh, that's better than ter terrestrial radio. But we need to get to that point where it's basically like the, the one click entertain me button. Yeah. And to, with talk radio, people talk for too long. These shows go too long for you to do a mix. It's one thing for YouTube to do a mix based on three, five, seven-minute videos. My show goes an hour, an hour and a half sometimes. These other podcasters go two or three hours sometimes. You need to start chapter tagging, or at least, or, or segmenting. Yeah, that's true. Up and does that exist? Does that exist as a, um, as a format officially, it, chapter tagging? It does, um, and there are also Because we do minute-by-minute minute recaps. We have the minute-by-minute in our YouTube descriptions and our website of here's every minute, every question Jason asked. Yep. And we're looking into, correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, having a transcription done. I don't know why we, why don't we have, because the super fans would do that on the wiki. Maybe we should just give super fans, what would it cost, 75 or 100 bucks? Well, why don't we just give each super fan like $100 to, if there's a super fan out there with no job, who's broke and living somewhere where they have plenty of time and they're watching the show anyway, if you want to transcribe the show, we'll give you 100 bucks to do it. Done. Okay, superfans email um, team at thisweekend.com. Um, and we're seeing we're seeing a lot of content producers. NPR, as a as a prime example, is um, is sort of at the cutting edge of making uh, of making mini episodes of their bigger stuff. their bigger stuff, and it, it makes oh, sense. It costs so much money to do that, though. We tried it for a while, and it was like we used to cut our vi our shows up into like you know twenty questions or whatever. But yep. that would take two or three days of editor time, so you. If you spend six hundred bucks, you never make it back. Just have natural transitions, and then and and then put little insets, and it's. Not I know it took two or three days though. Take an hour show, cut it up, take a couple days, five hundred dollars in cost, thousand dollars in cost, whatever it winds up being per week for us. It has to be some way to make that money back. Could be. I I um I may be a bit naive about it, but yeah. we're seeing more and more folks d doing it, yeah. and it and it seems to um it doesn't seem to co cost that much, but I'm not a yeah. I'm not on the production Well, just side. in terms of editing, you're talking about all in, 200 bucks a day for an editor or something. So yeah. it, can be, it can add up to cost. We're also this gets doing... us back to monetization. Yeah. If, if this is going to become a sustainable business, listen, my show is very sustainable. I'm very lucky to have great advertisers. Thank you. Um, but it took years to get there. Yeah. Most shows are not sustainable. They can never get the flywheel going of compensation and then investment and then more revenue, more investment. I and mean, we keep investing On and investing own. in this show. Yeah. I mean, the, these microphones alone and the compressors and travel, I mean, we spend a lot of money producing the show. Other people, they can't get started. 
How on their own. Solve it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it 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 has to. Um, there 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 have to be pl- platforms that do the selling for them. In the case of um, yeah. of really small shows, and a lot of them, you know, they start out. It's a it's an enthusiast. It's like Joe's sure. bass fishing That's how they started, yeah. show, um, and maybe it only has a, a a small following, but boy, do they love the show, and they yeah. you know they listen all the time, um, and so it's just a matter of time before it's rolled up and we want to be able to provide that service to content producers so that they don't have to go do it themselves yeah and have other people tried to become like there was there were a couple of companies that thought they were going to be like the podcasting roll-up company i guess pod show adam curry's that didn't seem to work odeo odeo was going to be a yeah, software platform but not monetization um what was the other one pod tracker does metrics yeah Somebody else who was going to do like, hey, here's a whole podcasting suite. Are you going to be that podcasting suite, or is it you're more cherry picking the winners? We're um, well, we we have twelve thousand plus shows mm. on now. So, and we see that there's a um, that the there's a for every user they listen to some stuff that's really popular mm. and some stuff that's really long tail. Yeah. Um, and so, and we think it's important to have all, all of that content. So to the extent that, um, so we're primary focus is making the best experience we can for our listeners. And by, you know, do, doing that, um, we want to have great content partnerships cause that's how we're going to get content. People click on the ads, on. those little banner ads. They do. Really? Which is, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, which is surprising. It would surprised us initially because we thought, well, people are just, you know, the phones it's in, in their, their pocket. pocket right, and yeah. So, um, what but do you use like an ad network? You use like Google or mostly or? mostly ad networks. Um, which one works best? It depends on who's running um, the you know, the brand CPM stuff at the time, Got because it. our click through rate is, is good. We tend to get more. And because you, you, now, so we, who are the top two or three? Is it Google and it's the ones you would expect. And then sometimes I don't even know. Is it Google? Yeah. Go- Google. And I, I mean, go- yeah, Google is, 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 is usually at the top. Um, and then you just, there are there startup companies that provide those ads too. There, there are some and tap joy. One of those like, I think so. There's a yeah. whole kind. There, there's a. Do you whole dynamically host serve those? Like, can you dynamically serve between networks? Like, which one's performing best, or is it just like Google? And you have to manually switch it the next day. No, we have. Um, it's a, it's coarse, but it's yeah. bas- basically um, it pulls from whoever has the the top at the time, and then yeah. if they don't, then it goes on to the next one. And so, how much on to the money do you one. think a show like mine makes Stitcher? Well, right. You must be able to you actually yeah. you know the number. How much has my show made, Stitcher? I um, hundreds, thousands. I actually don't know, but I could. You could, could look easily, it up. Yeah. yeah, I could look it up and figure it out. I'm just curious what you know the 300th or 400th show is worth in terms of revenue. So right now, um, we have mainly been focused on u- user yeah. growth. We don't have a direct sales force, right. and um, so we're relying on third-party ad networks, mm-hmm. and we're starting to get. A significant number of inbound requests for 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 direct sales. Do, so, do I get a piece of that? Those ads? You right? do, yeah. So we can log into the portal and just pick it up. What you, percentage do I get? You, um, it depends on. So in in this case, we basically sell. Um, so I think you get something like thirty or. 40%. In order to do that, you would need to, so not, not only the partner portal, you would need to just come to us. You're uh, in the top 35. You get the majority? In, in, in the instance where we sell, in an instance where you sell. On you YouTube, get I get majority. 55. On AdSense, I get 68. So that maybe we'll negotiate. Yeah, that's got to be a, no, it should be a disclosed rate. I mean, you should, yeah. you should match the large player YouTube, but it's not a meaningful amount of money yet for you guys? It or? isn't. No. It's not. I mean, So it's, we're talking about a, a moot point today. That's right. Yeah. But um, in the future. I'm not entirely moot, but, but Well, that's yeah, the thing. It's, it's like, this is the conversation that would occur behind closed doors. Like if I was calling you and I'm trying yeah. to put it out there because I am a fan of it and I would like to see you be very successful. And Thank so you. I think that the thing that would be great is if there was this like sort of open transparency and I could just turn on, I want banner ads, but I don't want pre-rolls. I want pre-rolls, but not banner ads. I could see it monetizing. Yep. And if I got a referral for every client person I sent to Stitcher, like, so if I say, you know, download Stitcher at this URL or you can find us here. There is. We have an affiliate program. And um, so you can log in for that. Do I get for every download? You actually get a dollar. Really? Yeah. 
Jason DeMott, take a note. We get a dollar per download? Yeah, it's it's um, something that we're piloting now, um, and we're just seeing wow. whether so or not So you're right on target with me, because so. I think that people would, you know, as a content provider, you know, I'm very reasonable about it. I, I look at this as, if this is where audience is, I want you to have enough money to keep building your business. Yeah. Want it to be fair, want it to be sustainable. That's a relationship I got with Google, relationship have with employees, whatever. You know, you want it to be sustainable and fair. Uh, and transparent, and also to have control. I think it's what the content people really want, is yep. the control. they do. Yeah. And so, uh, is, is the car traffic in any way uh, meaningful yet? Is it like low thousands of people a day, tens of thousands of people a day? Do you have any way of knowing? We do know. Um, it's not in the grand scheme of uh, our total listening. It's not um, hugely meaningful Single yet, digit? Where it's low what, single? We will um, be in low, so it's in the thousands, um, yeah. and and um, but we're going to. They're just starting to roll yeah, out. Yeah, right. By 2014, there will, um, if we we if they execute and we execute, um, there will be four million Stitcher enabled vehicles. Now, there's still. I mean, there's some steps you need to take. You need to. Connect sure. with Bluetooth, you need but to have But if 10% do, it's 400,000 people potentially every day tuning in. Right, and that's, Could and be that's, meaningful. Not, that's not insignificant. Um, not at all. It's a great start, in fact. In the car. Yeah. What about uh, home systems? Are you on the Sonos system? We are on the Sonos. i got to go find you guys in there because I do Rhapsody and Pandora on my Sonos, but I didn't see you. I'm a five-year Sonos user, so does that provide meaningful traffic? Is it, is it sticky traffic? Or do people not use talk radio on their... Sonos, they just use it for music. So actually, the reason we we um, we decided to work with Sonos and we haven't done other like um, you know TV integrations yeah. and stuff is people listen to talk um, at, at home in the in the bedroom when they're getting ready for work sure. or or, or um, getting ready for you know or going to sleep in the kitchen while they're making dinner. Right. Um, just not so much in the living room where they would listen to music and watch TV. So um, Sonos was a great match for us because you have units throughout your house um and the uh the numbers for sonos are similar probably a little bit higher still than for automotive um so yeah. but and, and a lot of them are their stitcher users already yeah um and now they're you know they're listening on 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 sonos i've since i uh since I integrated Stitcher on my Sonos, I, I don't think I've l listened. Um, well, I guess I listen on my iPad some, but I, I just listen on Sonos. Now, it's what about video? Cool because now you have a lot of podcasters who are taking on the challenge of video. We yep. are one of them. And when we started, I originally had a podcast called Calacanis Cast. You can look it up. And it was just audio. We did about 30, 40 episodes. Ron Conway was on. Evan Williams was on. A bunch of cool people. Um, but then we just said, you know, it has to be video. People really want to see what's going on, and we're having the conversation anyway. But it does add a magnitude of cost. But your app doesn't support video yet, or does? Does not. And we don't have any plans to wow. support video. And why is that? Is it just based on the statistics that people just like to listen to this in the cars and in gyms? It's, um, it's that it's a completely different consumption paradigm, and mm. we want a user experience focused on listening while you're on the go doing other things. Right. If you're in front of a, and there, and there are plenty of folks, YouTube being one of them, yeah. um, sol solving the video problem um, and making video where, where you're sitting in front of it and you can make active choices sure. about what you're doing. So we, we want the best user experience for, for, for audio. So we've had to be pretty religious about that. Tell me um, about the integration um, in the app between the shows and advertising. I think that that's you know obviously a compelling place to go. So if I'm listening to the show, if there were watermarks or not watermarks, timestamps of like, I said right now, how many people use Stitcher and people could vote at that very moment like a survey monkey or something. Right. And, you know, there'd be some interactivity. So I could look down at my phone, hey, if you're using Stitcher, make sure you go do this. Or hey, if, if I do the ad for MailChimp or I do the ad for SendGrid or Squarespace, I say, hey, if you want to start a free trial, just click here. You know that kind of stuff could be very compelling as yeah, well. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. So um, we can we can do it in your show. So if you is it, it custom right now or is right it now platform? it is custom. So you're trying to platform platform atize that to make up a word. Y yeah, that's a good word. Um, and but in a sort of semi-automated. So we have a partner portal now, and right. and like you were talking about being able to, you know, check 
um, you know, opt in for certain things and opt out for certain things, that that's one where you would potentially be able to um, opt in for it. it. It does, from an ops perspective, though, there's a little bit more heavy lifting because we don't know who, you know, you would have to, hmm. there'd have to be a link. Um, so right now it's, um, we've, I think experimented with it in a few cases. We're looking for content partners to experiment with it yeah. more because it's hugely well, we, compelling. It is very compelling to me. And you're at 8 million downloads now, Yeah. which means I'm thinking at least 20% of the people use it monthly. So that means you're at 1.6 million monthly users. And I'm thinking on a daily basis, it's got to be at least a third of that. So I'm thinking you have a couple of hundred thousand people a day using the app. I mean, in the ballpark? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. Okay, that's what I do for a living. Yeah. So um, if you have that kind of traffic, now's the time to actually start selling. When are you going to have your own dedicated sales team? And is that the is that the sort of 2013 plan? Now that you got your C round, you got that nice big chunk exchange, get that New York office, get the Chicago office, get the San Francisco, LA ad sales teams going. It is. Mm -hmm. um, and and right now we're specking. I mean, we have kind of a rudimentary ad platform, mm -hmm. but um, kind of specking out what the next phase of it is um, and um, and then starting to hire a sales force in Q1. So. How hard is that to do? Have you done it before? I mean, you were the VP of sales at StubHub, so you've done sales obviously before, but was the sales at StubHub, were they, um, was the sales team there when you joined? It's a pretty different, it was a pretty different type of sale. It was much more kind of business development at, at StubHub and, and working with teams um, to to get them to use StubHub as a um, as a platform. Right, basically. so it was a so, one-year sales process with a lot of golf games and Knicks games and expensive anything, sushi dinners. Yeah, so yeah, you, you spend $10,000 courting a client, then finally they say, okay, you can resell Chicago Bulls tickets. So this is my first experience um, in the, uh, you know, on the advertising grind it out, ad, grind sales it out ad, ad sales so right. i um i've learned a lot but it's all theoretical until yeah. you're kind of out doing it and luckily we've got um we've got a uh um we have good venture folks um behind us before. and who have done it before and they've seen it quite a lot um and they're helpful and we have um, you know, we're building an advisory board of folks that can help yeah, us yeah. out, and then we'll, we'll um, I'm sure we'll make some mistakes. And learn you think it's going to be go. a federated media type sale to use, um, you know, the name of a company here that's been successful at, I think, you know, sort of this generalized sponsorship and, you know, um, uh, embedded advertising, if you will. It or will, do you think it's going to be like, here's your banner, here's your pre roll, go? No, it will be. It will definitely be. I mean, our so our user base is, as you could imagine, is is um, it's an it's an affluent pro professional, um, high income. Uh, on mobile, people are also looking for uh, advertisers, especially brand advertisers, are looking for things that are a bit different, and we mm. can provide that, and we can provide kind of a cooler, more robust experience. We also have relationships with content partners, so we can do stuff together, yeah. which is really cool. So it will, um, it will be much more of kind of a customized approach. There will be, you know, with those buys, of course, there'll be the, the banner ads and the, yeah. the, the basic but we're, stuff. We're but open. I mean, just as a content provider, we'd be very much open to you coming and saying, we're working with American Express open business, right? And we say, oh, you know, we, we have a call schedule with them, but we haven't gotten there yet. And you say, yeah, as part of this, we're going to put you on the top level. And we want to do a, you know, 20 episode, 10 minute episodes each of answering a tough business question. And we got them on board for, you know, $10,000 per episode to do this. And we're going to send this much traffic. It's a $10,000 ad buy per episode. And it's going to be, you know, whatever it is, $400,000. Would you be up for, you know, doing it? We're, we're up for it. Like we would... Good. We would do something like that. It just nobody's calling about that. Although I have a relationship with Federated Media for Mahalo that is similar to that, where they're going to start looking at our apps and shows and sort of suggesting these sort of big quarter million dollar to you know five million dollar consultative you know three sixty campaigns. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, you'll be on our uh, a short list. On the short list. Well, yeah, business seems to be. List. Is business the best category? What's the best category? So for podcasting. If you could start three shows, if you if you could have three daily shows right now to work with, and you own, you represented the uh, advertising, what three would you want to have? I well, a lot of it depends on the advertiser themselves, right? right? So and, so what and do they the want? Show, yeah, the shows that fit, and so the the um, the categories that are popular are um, 
are uh, sort of technology, obviously, sure. business and finance, politics right now. Sure, you not a go away. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, but it, it was before we got into into oh, the elections. And then sports, but kind of geeky sports like fantasy football, fantasy baseball, that, ah, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, um, and then social commentary. Oh, social commentary. Social commentary, which so is kind of a So if I got on here and talked about of, race and religion and all that kind of good stuff we talked about in the pre-show... Yeah, you could start another show. Like this get, week in get... atheism. This Popular. Week. It's got to be a better term than atheism. We need like a term that's not as like I hate religion. It's got to be more like I, I'm this week in spirituality. This week in spirituality. There right. you go. I don't believe in God. You got to start it. Yeah. <laughs> I, that may not be your intro. I don't believe in. So God, what about but... marketing? Like, if I, do you work with partners to help them get more subscribers? Is there an opportunity there for you to come to somebody like me and say, hey, you want to get ten thousand more sponsors? you know, pay us a dollar per subscriber, we'll put you at the top, or pay us this amount for the top slot and we'll get you another 10,000 viewers per week because our show is doing really well. Yeah. I would like to introduce it to more people. Maybe I could be your client. We would, um, so we have uh, a number of content partners already who are talking about Stitcher as the, as the, you know, as the platform of choice to listen to. Yeah. Um, and that's what, when we were talking about a little bit before about the, um, uh, about the affiliate program that we were piloting right now, right. that was a way to be able to, to, yeah. um, to enhance it. It was happening anyway, which is, which is great. Yeah, I've and mentioned you've, Stitcher. Yeah, you've mentioned Stitcher. Yeah. I like great. Stitcher. I like, I'm listening. I like the iTunes podcast thing. I think Stitcher's better, but you know, both of them work, but I think Stitcher works better. And we have to be, we obviously have to be careful with it, especially while we're kind of in the infancy of monetization ourselves, because we, we, we want to pay it forward as much as we can, but not too much. Oh no, you don't want to wipe we, it out. Yeah. Like if I tweet all of a sudden, download Stitcher, you might get 10,000 people. But I suppose if you got 10,000 of my listeners, you wouldn't mind paying the 10 dimes because you're probably paying $3 to other places to acquire customers. Yeah, we, we we're actually, um, so we'll te- you know we do user acquisition tests, but the right. the, the best um, so, so far the the growth has come pr- organically, which is which is great because it's uh, otherwise user acquisition cost is high, and through um, and then uh, through through content partners, yeah. um, and and that's been that's been what's most successful. It's the it's like the only app you've maybe not heard of in the top 10 of the news category um, of, of... Well, yeah, and if the con- it makes so. sense. If the content provider is promoting it, there, if you're listening to a podcast, you're going to be a pretty qualified lead for Stitcher. That's right. Yeah, I mean, yeah if, as long as you have a smartphone, there's yeah. pretty much no reason... So what about wouldn't. selling you know, listeners and promotional spots to us? Like if we paid you money to get us another 100,000 tune-ins a week. Like, can I buy the featured spot on the business category and be number one? It's a good question. So that, that's an area we haven't gone into yet, yeah. and p- partially because we want to be, um, we want to be, agnostic from yeah. we're a platform so we want um we want listeners to trust us yeah. um and so but we certainly could i mean google yeah. does it everybody everybody sells does. the yeah, top everybody. slot right city search yelp everybody sells that i mean it's pretty as long as it says you it's know partner cl- yeah it's clear that sponsor it's, partner ad whatever i mean if and it's buy probably it. something that we will do at some I point i know for us we're sort of like hey we want to get more people to listen to the show the show is making money and we would love to invest in a smart way to get more listeners. It would have to, obviously, just like you're concerned about, hey, am I getting actual downloads that'll convert? But maybe we could just trade it, and you could just, well, I'll bring up your product in the show, and you just feature us at the top of the swap. list. We'd do a yeah. swap. Yeah. Same, we just monitor it. It's pretty easy. I mean, we could easily track how many clicks it is you know, a link got for us. It's a great something. thing about the internet. It is pretty neat, so isn't you, uh, it? Especially you, relative to you know, what radio. What about studio space? Where's the st- you think you do a studio ever? We uh so so um I was actually talking to Jason too oh, my, about my your Jason, Jason about, oh yeah about this very I thing. I want to open we a San a, Francisco um, studio. Yeah. So we have uh we have a small studio that a, a broom couple closet. local it, it's a little bigger than a broom it's a glorified broom closet. Yeah. It's a little bit bigger than yeah. that. You you might need a little bit more space. But we have some local podcasters that'll come in and do oh, do nice. some shows and then and then some, sometimes like out of work. Uh, radio folks when they're between gigs like uh, Fernando and Greg for instance that yeah. was actually in our broom closet it was in our old office we've since yeah. we've got like a bigger broom closet yeah. so we have a, a space and then we we we, we um, record some content ourselves like stitchers tips about yeah. new features that are in the, the app etc yeah. so you're more than welcome to use it but yeah it I think there's an interesting closet. opportunity for folks YouTube as getting back to the YouTube example which seems like YouTube is like maybe two years ahead of where you guys are at 
maybe not in terms of users, they're ahead of everybody on the planet, but in terms of thinking about the content ecosystem, they're opening a space uh, in Los Angeles is really cool. for content providers to have resources. So like if you're a content provider and you want to do like a short comedy skit show, you can go there and book a studio, maybe even engineers to record it or you, equipment to record it, sound stage, the whole bit. Like that's pretty neat. I think that for you, you know, I look at your business and say, wow, you know, supporting content creators equals the success of the business on one side and then courting advertisers equals success on the other side. And with audio, you, you, you need quite a lot less equipment wise in yeah. order to, to get something You can set up a proper studio reasonable. for 10 grand, no problem. Yeah. You know, I mean, video, you start to get into a hundred grand, so it's 10 That's times right. as much if you want to yep. do proper video. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, so Speaking that's, of proper video, can we get these cameras upgrades? JVCs to me seem like they're a couple years old, Brandis. Maybe we need to get new cameras. Are there better cameras out there that would make the picture look a lot better? I don't know how old these things are. All right, you know what? Spend 15 grand. Get three more cameras. See, that's how I do it. Right in the middle of the show. So right, right, right in there. I got money to spend. I want to, <laughs> you know, try to increase the quality of the content. That's what I'm constantly in a race to do, is to see if I can make the quality better. Good. And that's both through the content itself and... Yeah, it's like you get better guests, you get better microphones, so pretty compressors. Good mics. These Shure mics are the best you can get. There's one for, for talk radio. Um, there's one other one that's, uh, what's the other one, Brandis? The really good one that's 3500 that Howard Stern uses? The Noonan. The Noonan. Neumann. Neumann. Yeah, it's like a Neumann. It's like $3,500 that Howard Stern uses. But then I listened to a test online of the Neumann versus the Shure. And you couldn't tell. Yeah, and I couldn't tell. And so I was like, well, if I can't tell. But then... In this room, though, it's important to have because there's no... Well, you know, the last time sound, we did the uh, there, yeah. episodes up here, we were at Rocket Space, another co-working space, and they... Uh, that's not an invite-only one, but a nice one. Um, and they um, were kind enough to host us, but we didn't use these microphones. We used lavaliers. And I think that's a key in podcasting. You use lavaliers, it's going to sound like a 7 out of 10. Yeah. You use the Shure microphones, you're at a 9. And then if you get the sound mix right... You know, you can get that nine and a half, ten quality sound. It's important. Yeah, yeah. The user interface on yours is pretty amazing. How, how are you guys doing on acquiring talent over there? I mean, obviously you got a lot of open positions. I'm sure the business is growing, but from everything I'm hearing, there's absolutely nobody left to hire in San Francisco. True or not true? Luckily, we have um, great designers, product folks, and engineers, Already. and we're always looking for more. And, it's getting um, harder to hire people. It is. We're, and the salaries are insane. They are. Um, so what do you do? What do you do? Well, we've, uh, we're, we are doing some more out of state recruiting. Uh, um, oh, you're recruiting people to come here. So yeah, you get somebody from Boise, to, Idaho to move here. Yep. Or Arizona as I think that's, we have a, uh, uh, Android engineer starting next week. I think that's where he's coming. Oh, you know, oh, he's going to be coming from Android from he's Arizona. Arizona or some. What about yeah. starting a, an office in Brazil or in, you know, Bulgaria or something like that? Have you thought about that? We've thought about it. The the thing about it is 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 um it's still it's it's a tight small team and they're all in the same place and they um and and they they talk and it's important yeah. and and you know I mean it. So you don't buy into this sort of like outsourcing. It's, it doesn't sound like a great idea. We don't. Yeah. yeah, I think it's an important and and um, yeah, I think it's important to be, especially when we're kind of at the cutting edge of something yeah. and we're trying to solve re really difficult problems to have a yeah. place where. And this folks is your first together. startup. I was early at StubHub. Yeah. Um, and that was a great ride and great to they see. They went public or they got bought. What happened? Got bought by um, eBay for um, a good. Sum. What was the number? Was Three hundred and ten. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And you were the good. VP of sales. I was early. The VP of sales on that. Oh, really? I, um, First I, year? Second year? That was... Uh, employee number? It was 10. You were employee number 10? All right, so watch Jason do math right now. What's it? Uh, let's see. Well, VP of sales, 10th employee. Here, so here's then you the, got your second grant. There's going to be a piece of math that's going to take that 1. number down. I'm going to get 2.5% to start, then three rounds of dilution down to... You had 1.2 points. You made $4 million. So the the only part <laughs> you're obnoxious. missing in the calculation we'll that <laughs> is the um, is that I decided to go to business school at uh, the end of year two. Oh, so you got um, half that. So you got a, you had a half point and you made two million bucks. I'm very proud of you. That's thank awesome. Thank you very much. That's I awesome. Pay for the loft that. and then that sets you up for now. That's hilarious. Is it, am I that close? No. 
Oh, you know? I'm totally far off? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to answer that. you got to be kidding <laughs> I me. I just do this funny thing now because yeah. I'm so good at math that I just keep... No, nah, I'm not so good at math. I'm so good at guessing like business stuff because I've been through so many board meetings of other companies and been through these conversations. Oh, VP of sales. That's 1.5, 2.5. Uh, well, I was an early guy. Second grant, too. Maybe. You end up doing it in your head anyway. I, just I, do, it it, I, do, it, I do it all the time I'm just myself, like, oh, I got but, it. Yeah. Yeah, but you this. call it out. On, on yeah, the I show, probably shouldn't do pretty, it on the show, uh, but that, that's why people. It's pretty funny, you know, but it was um, it was a it was an awesome experience, yeah. and uh, so Jeff Fleur, who is um, one of the co-founders, is um, on our board, yeah. and um, the well, that's a good sign yeah. if you yeah the gun the co-founders then followed you to your company and it's like wants to support you. Well, the the um, the the nice was thing he an angel about, investor too? So the ni- nice thing about um, having doing an angel round, starting a company at the around the time that that StubHub was getting sold was the whole management team invested. Yeah, um, but Ooh. getting but recruiting was tough. So mm. I I um I was not successful on that front. You're not allowed to poach, that's for sure. Can't steal anybody. Well, it had it'd been a little while. So oh, if that's okay. I, I tried. But you gotta I be graceful about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how do you how do you tackle that? You just gracefully. Gracefully. Yeah. Do you call them up and say, hey, these guys wanted to come I here? I wasn't actually able to poach, so yeah. I, I I um. I, so they have to come find you. You can't actually call them and say, hey, come join the company. But if they do apply, California law. I did. You're good. Well, I mean, I did try to poach, and I don't know what the laws were, but I was just aggressive. I think the heck law is it. like, well, if you no, it's not the law. If you sign an agreement not to poach, right. then you don't poach. I didn't have such but an agreement. But if somebody applies, yeah, to your company, you, there's a California non-compete doesn't exist, right? You, non-compete is such a silly idea anyway. Like, yeah, it is silly. It's actually on the East Coast. You can actually like enforce it. Like some hair. I remember in the story about it went to bat with a hairdresser of all things where this hairdresser had a non-compete for a certain number of years and she couldn't, she or he, I can't remember if it was a male or female, couldn't work within 100 miles of the hair salon. Right. Or 50 miles or something. And it was like, that she wanted to work across town and she had to move to another town. Like it was like Boston or something. It was crazy. And here it's just fair game. And it was like a two-year non-compete. And they weren't paying her during that two years. Where do you read this stuff? I, or did you I hear it on stage? No, I, all I do is read. That's all I do is read and then talk to smart people. You learn a lot that way. That's what this show is about. Me pumping like you for that. information That's so that I can build my business little, better. Yeah. Take my little notes. Do you take your little take notes. Your notes and figure yeah. it out. So first time entrepreneur, but you really, you, got, you learned a lot on the job at StubHub. I did. Um, and it was, it, it was also kind of when I realized that this is what I'm just like building it was what I loved and seeing um, an opportunity. Uh, it was a no brainer to, to, to me when I heard the idea and that um, the co-founders were, they had just left kind of Stanford Business School, Jeff dropped out and, and I knew a little bit about, um, I knew, a, a, I, I had been a trader, so I yeah. knew a bit about markets and I had worked briefly in the ticket industry. Mm-hmm. And when, um, he told me the idea. I was like, "That's brilliant." Sure. And I, I, I have to do this. This is a better. Did you advertise better mouse on radio? StubHub was on radio all the time. So was that? We did. Did that inform your thinking about the power of radio? It, um, it may have subconsciously, yeah. but I think it was more um, with Stitcher. The the light bulb went off. I actually, uh, so at first I saw that there was all this great kind of random audio content out there that was not in podcast form that was kind of like you know angry ex-girlfriend voice voicemail yeah you know great whatever best man sure. speech kind of that kind of stuff yeah the viral nonsense. viral kind of yeah. and there wasn't really a home for an audio an audio home for it and and with audio you really need to be like it needs to be curated it's it can't be there can't be like a you know like a youtube of it because you'd rather watch a video yeah. in most cases so i just for fun i i i hired a comedian when we started doing this uh, basically a podcast which was like an america's funniest home video for audio and people would send in stuff this funny content and and there were you know you'd vote on yep. what you thought was the best one and and so th- through that i saw wow you know there's already a lot of great content there's great podcast con- out, content out there but it's impossible to yeah to, to listen to and i remember being on the phone with my mom like late night and trying to explain to her how to get my like radio show on her yeah. ipod and it yeah. was i was and and so i thought about the mobile internet and i was like well if I mean, that delivery mechanism makes sense. And I was also an early adopter Pandora. Yeah. And I saw, you know, on the music side, how much better an experience can yeah. be. So that's, 
that's 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 what happened and i was yeah. just like the light bulb went off and i was like this is there's no question it's an absolute certainty this is the future of radio yeah two two-way internet connection yahoo gonna buy this better. company you think what's that you think yahoo gonna buy the company do Your i think company. yahoo's gonna buy the company seems like a perfect purchase for yahoo 35 great people in in san francisco advertising technology mobile all the sugar that they don't have right now i think i was we're, about to say the s board and i get the swear jar is gonna cost me 10 bucks i um i i don't this is the perfect so. purchase for yahoo have they contacted you yet if they contact you right now and they were like hey is there 100 million dollars you think you'd sell no that'd be too small because so. you raised 10 million in the last round so dad let me do my math there okay, we go million, here we go again 60 million there's a 50 million post for 20 percent you got to get to 250 for your v 200 250 for your vcs to feel really good about it we Today, really want to but see, you're long. We want. We would like to. P- part of it, if if we are gonna be acquired, and yeah. we're heads down, and we're building a business, right. but we we really want to see a future for this. And yeah. there are some, you know, acquirers where there wouldn't be a future. I don't know if Yahoo's one of them or not, frankly. Yeah. And and then there are some where the, you know there's some where there would be, and there's some where there there wouldn't be. But you're five years into the business. Don't investors start getting a little antsy around this time where they're like, hey, the early investors, hey, you know, it's been five years, and we usually like to get a return in four to seven. You're kind of in that window where it needs to either explode, which it has. Well, it's had moderate growth. I think you'd probably say maybe not explosive, but really but solid coming growth. Along. Yeah. But coming along now yeah. with the and really smartphones are so nascent. Um, it's still a lot more to go. I mean, is there pressure now, or do you feel a sense of pressure? Like, mm, I gotta get a return from my investors. I really should start looking at M and A. The the well, one nice thing about um, having investors that have seen a lot of this before yeah. is it is it um, it takes time. I mean, yeah. it takes more time. That that I mean, they, we hear about all of the we hear about the Facebooks and the Pinterest Instagrams. and all the Instagrams of the world because everybody wants to for obvious reasons. Everybody right. want to write and read about like you know hockey stick, fa- you know fast exit out, yeah. you know huge. But the the reality is that these things just take a while. StubHub yeah. took took a while. The average venture return I think is eight years. Yeah. Um, and we didn't take our first venture money until um, 2008. So by yeah. that standard, we're halfway to the average venture return. So yeah. Um, we're, I mean, the pressure's there clearly. Yeah. We 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 have very high um, expectations for ourselves and. We've raised money at a high cost of capital, so um, but we were uh, just head, heads down and building yeah. the building business. Hey, listen, continued success. I'm a big fan of the product. Everybody out there should um, download Stitcher right now, even though I'm not getting a dollar per download. I don't care. Um, <laughs> we could make it retroactive. No, I'm not worried about it. I, I, trust me, there's going to be, I'm going to have a, at some point I'm going to ask for a favor, Noah. I know you are. I'm going to ask for a it. favor. I can call see on it you. Coming. You like The Godfather? I do. You can stop by being a man. That's my favorite scene. Wow. Remember when he's yelling at the guy who uh, wants to get the part? And then he's like. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, what can I do, Godfather? What can I do? You can stop by being a man. <laughs> he yells at the guy. It's great. Hey, listen, Noah, great job. Um, and if you are looking for a job and you're an awesome uh, executive in sales, apparently they got that going on, and I'm sure engineering and UX and design, all those things, is always open positions at a growing company. I'm going to guess first name at Stitcher.com could work. Is Stitcher.com your domain? Yeah, first name at Stitcher.com. I'm going to just say, if you can't figure that yeah. out, you're a dumbass. But hey, follow him at Noah, S-A-R-K, Noah Sark. Noah Sark. Oh, my God. So it, right? genius. Noah's I Ark. didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I said Noah Sark. <laughs> no, I, Noah Sark. That's I a get, great I get, name. Uh, at tweeted all the time where people are saying it's raining too much and like yeah people are dumb like today like this animals two by two jason emraz i know he's a really sweet kid and he's got the all the girls love him but every effing day he put an underscore i think his name is jason underscore emraz right and of course every knucklehead who uses who twitter is, who is this guy jason emraz m-r-a-z he is the guy who sings a lot of these like is like justin bieber kind of no no he's more like a jack johnson soulful uh, you know like hippie dippy you know folky kind of guy but he used jason underscore emraz i think is the problem so every teenage girl who replies to him or whatever lee or is going to tweet him and quote his songs just does at jason space emraz they don't wow. know how to do underscore. So it's so coming to you. 
So it comes to me. And then they're like, can I kiss you? Can I hug you? And you're like, yes. Can I come over? And I just reply, I'm like, thanks. So I reply to his tweets, thanks. Sure. I think about changing, I was going to change my avatar to Jason Emraz for a day and just reply to people because I was doing a funny thing where I changed it to a different Jason every day. I had Jason Voorhees. I had Jason Bateman. Just to, and then I would reply to people as if I was Jason Bateman. But then I saw somebody was like, you know, you can get your Twitter handle turned off if you impersonate people. And I was like, I don't think I want to risk at Jason. Yeah, the Twitter not. handle at Jason. It's probably a, pretty, a stupid it's a idea. Good Twitter handle. That's me. I'm such an idiot sometimes. Oh, listen, 8 million downloads and counting. Get Stitcher. It's a beautiful app. And thank you to our sponsors. Stitcher, you're not taking 65% of my sponsors. But I'll give you five. I'll give you 10%. No. I actually am really looking forward to you guys having a sales department. I think it's really important to get monetization going um, and collaboration going on monetization and people who have distribution who can support, you know, content providers. I think it's always a great thing. So I think it's really important for especially for the up and coming podcasters. I really like I feel like podcasting died because you know, the, the first wave of podcasting died because it was not sustainable, there was no revenue. And now I really think that, you know, Stitcher and YouTube and you, you, you guys and the teams and the hard work you're doing over there is really could make a difference in inspiring content providers to, to make this their full time gig. And I really think that, you know, if you if you really lean into that, really supporting those podcasters, you know, especially the emerging ones, yep. that's where you guys can do some big damage because I got to tell you, everybody who asks me for podcasting advice, they always say to me, how do I make money? How do I make money? Like the technical stuff, they all figure out. Yep. But how to make money sustainably, that's why YouTube is exploding right now. YouTube, nobody knows it. Yeah. People suspect it. I know it from the inside. YouTube has, I believe YouTube has figured out monetization. And I think they've figured out or are figuring out in the last six months and will in the next year how to support content providers optimally against that monetization. And when that happens, they just change the world. They've already changed the world in terms of views, but man, I think they're really going to change the world in terms of here's somebody who's just making videos casually and now it's their full-time job. And I think you can do the same for podcasting. Like here's somebody doing podcasting casually, but you take them from a thousand dollars a year in nonsensical revenue or zero dollars a year to their 5,000, 10,000. And it's like, Hey, you know what? If I can make five to 10,000 a year, which is what happened with this show. Hey, we started making, you know, we got Bing or, you know, early on when they launched to sponsor the show for, I think, 50K for 10 episodes or 20 episodes. And was like, wow, this actually could be a business. And sure enough, it became one. Anyway, long-winded way of saying, hey, Stitcher's got a very important mission. If you're an employee of Stitcher and you're listening to this, um, I do appreciate all the hard work that you're doing. Brandis, excellent job on the audio again, bringing up the good mics. Jason DeMond, thank you for selling out the show until February if you're trying to advertise. Uh, just email DeMont, D-E-M-A, just email sales at this weekend. That's easier. I don't have to spell his name. Sales at this weekend.com. Although we're sold out. So what am I going to do? Like, I can't tell you. But anyway, you could, they could probably get in for February, March of 2013. There might be a couple slots because you sold out everything until February and then half of February going forward. So there might be like one or two, two slots per week that are open right now. You got to buy 10 weeks. And what is it now? 4,000 per ad? We raised it. Last year was three. Now it's four. That's it. Four thousand dollars per ad, Noah. That's pretty solid. It's pretty tight, isn't it? It's coming. By the way, there are five ad slots a week. I don't want me to do math for any, but four. But then there's the startup of the week, oh, yeah. which is a lower rate t- right now. But I'm just saying, if we hit that rate next year, we're gonna we're hiring a full-time producer for the show. Yep. Just this show, and we're gonna start doing live episodes. The first of which will be, I think, in November, the ninth. We need a guest. I think Om Malik would be a good guess. I've always wanted to interview him because he's a journalist turned... Or M.G. Siegler. I really wanted to have M.G. Siegler on the program. We've got to reach out to those two guys. All right, listen. It's a long preamble all about me at the end. It's supposed to be about Stitcher. Um, but this is a good episode because it's really like... I feel like we need to collaborate more, like work on some stuff together, solve these problems for these young podcasters and, and really help grow this industry. The industry like Adam Curry and... Dave Weiner, they did all this amazing, important work, and then it just feels like, and then now Leo Laporte is doing fantastic. Like, we really need to, as a group, get together and push this forward this to the next level. This is the level. rise. It's finally coming. I this think is it is. It? But yeah. I, I mean, if you look at Leo Laporte, who I've, you know, essentially modeled my career after here as a podcaster, and, and also a lot of Adam Curry and Dave Weiner stuff informed me a lot because he was very honest and forthright about his stuff. But, you know, we're standing on their, those guys' shoulders, and we really could do some damage now in terms of mobile. Because people have it in their pocket. That's where it is. 
It's right there. Mm, it's got such a bright future. Hey, download Stitcher and let me know what you think. We'll see you again next time on This Week in Startups. Bye.